Hometown Radio, 1580 KGAF presents the Community Service Report. Here is Dee Blanton. Thanks very much. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to our Thursday Community Service Program. Today is Munster Memorial Hospital Day, and we are very happy to have a first-time guest on the show today. She is Susan Ward, a speech pathologist at MMH. Hi, Susan. Hi, how are you, Dee? I'm doing well. It's uh, great to meet you and uh, welcome you to the program here. Uh, First of all, let's talk about you. Give us a little bit about uh, yourself and your background. My background in terms of where I grew up? Uh, Just your whole history. How's that? Okay. Well, I spent a lot of my life in Gainesville, believe it or not, because my great-grandfather and lots of relatives lived here, so we were constantly coming to Gainesville. I'm so old, I remember Mr. M, for anybody (laughs) who's old enough to remember that. (laughs) And um, so at some point, my parents moved us to Oklahoma, and that's where I spent most of my adult life and got all of my college degrees. So I have one from Oklahoma State University. That was my first. And then I got a master's and a Ph.D. from University of Oklahoma. I presume you got back to Texas then as quick as you could, right? Yes, of course I did. <laughs> well, we're glad that you did. Uh, talk about your experience in, in uh, speech. First of all, what made you want to be a speech pathologist? Well, that's a little bit complicated, but ultimately, for people who go to college undecided, Oklahoma State University had a program to help us decide. And so through the course of narrowing it down from hundreds of options Whittling it all the way down to one, speech pathology was still standing. So that's what I declared as my major, and I never, ever changed it. I love being a speech pathologist, and I'll tell you why. All right, tell me. The two most important things we do that make us feel human and help us be functioning members in society are we communicate and we eat. And as a speech pathologist, I get to deal with both of those issues. So if somebody takes away your ability to communicate, you're automatically in a lesser status, not only within society, but within your family unit. And if we take away your ability to eat, the very same thing happens. When we socialize with friends or we socialize with family, we usually gather around the table, we eat, we share meals, and we converse. So when you can't do those things, it's a very devastating life experience, and there's nothing that can replace that. So as a speech-language pathologist, when I get to deal with the swallowing problems and the communication problems and give that ability to eat back to somebody or to let a man say to his wife, I love you, when she thought she was never, ever going to hear those words again, it's a very emotional thing and a, a huge honor on my part to be able to do that for anybody. And very gratifying, no doubt, for you. And I, I see how that would be. I, you know, I, I think we all think about what it would be like and fear what it would be like to not be able to see or hear. But we may not think about what it would be like not to talk, not, not to be able to communicate with our voice. And uh, luckily, we have people like you here to, to, to help in that respect. Uh, let's talk about uh, speech pathology at Munster Memorial Hospital. Tell us what sort of services you offer. Well, before I even say that, I want to tell you I'm very honored to work at Munster. It was a bit of a fluke that I ended up there, and I have been there for almost a year and a half, and it's such an honor on my part to work with that team because it's the most incredible rehab team I've seen anywhere, and I've worked in big cities and nationally renowned rehab facilities. I've never seen a finer team, and I've never seen a finer facility anywhere. So that's impressive. So I'm honored to get to be a part of that team. As far as what services we offer for speech pathology, whatever you might need, I can do it. A long time ago, even though I was very much a specialist, I had a a mentor in my life who said the direction is leaning toward people need to be more generalists. And so I started studying up in all the areas I had neglected, and I continue to polish my skills all the time. So if you have a swallowing problem, of course I can deal with that. Children, adults, it doesn't matter. We'll see anybody who wishes to have our services. We take Medicaid, we take insurance, we take private pay. If you have a stuttering problem, if you've had a stroke and you have a communication problem that is very typical after a stroke, aphasia, and a speech problem often involves dysarthria, which is a weakness in the speech pattern, or apraxia, which is a breakdown in the motor planning of 
what you want to say. You know what you want to say, but you can't quite get it out. So if you want to say the word elephant, it may come out 10 different ways on 10 different tries. That's apraxia. These are very common problems after stroke. And of course, those are the areas I like to work with. And I guess uh, referring to that then, uh, I, I think most people think, and, and maybe it's true, but maybe it's not, you can, you can clear it up. Uh, someone who's had a stroke, isn't there a certain time period where this sort of therapy really isn't a, as effective as it would be nearer the stroke? We always want to do therapy as soon as possible to maximize the recovery for the patient, even though patients are typically in what we call spontaneous recovery phase and that can extend up to a year. But the research has shown us that people actually can benefit from therapy for as many as 10 years after stroke. It just won't be as fast. And sometimes we have to be more clever about what we do to make functional improvements. The same thing goes for traumatic brain injury. We've got a lot of traumatic brain injury in this country that goes completely undiagnosed, partly because you can't always see it on a brain imaging. And so you can have shearing injury to the, the nerve fibers in the brain, which will create a very devastating functional impairment, but it won't show up on imaging. And so people think there's nothing wrong, or they think, well, this person's just different now, or they have a behavioral issue, when in fact, they have a brain impairment that's causing those problems, and I'd really like to help them. Sometimes it's about function, you know, sometimes it's about compensation but unless I get to see the individual no matter what their problem is I can't really help everybody's different and so every therapy program gets tailored to the individual's needs and do you run into a lot of uh, patients that that are just frustrated and the more they work on it the more frustrated they become because it, it's got to be frustrating not to be able to say what you want to say or be able to say it properly it is very frustrating yes and of course I run into people who are frustrated by that. That's what I do is try to find ways to help them communicate what they need to communicate with a whole lot less frustration. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about the future. Uh, what are the future plans at MMH? Uh, you, are you going to bring on any new services or expand your services any at all? Yes, we are actually in the process of gearing up to offer the Lee Silverman voice training program, which is very much geared toward people who have motor speech issues, such as persons with Parkinson's disease or sometimes multiple sclerosis, sometimes even just issues related to a post-stroke, and sometimes children even will have the motor speech disorders as a childhood developmental disorder. Mm -hmm. And so the Lee Silverman program can help address those types of speech problems that they're experiencing. I always worry about North Texas because we're so far up here and we're, we're almost so remote that a lot of people are going without services, which is why I want them to know I'm there at Munster and it's a great facility and it would be my honor to help anybody who needs the help. All right, I'm going to end on a personal note. As, you, as you've been told, I like to talk about myself. It's, that's not really true. But uh, as we were talking before we went on uh, today, uh, you know, I, I've, I have a little trouble with my throat. You were talking about my voice and that I sounded younger than I, than I am. Thank you very much. Uh, but uh, then I told you about some problems I had had with some raspiness and all, and it had kind of been chalked up to reflux and things like that. And you say that's very common too, right? Yes, a lot of people reflux, and as we get older, we're more likely to have reflux problems. And what we know from the research is that a person can actually have very significant reflux, meaning stomach contents are splashing up into the esophagus and sometimes into the throat and even into the airway. Over time, if you leave that unchecked, it's very dangerous. It can cause issues to the voice. It can cause tissue changes inside the larynx, but it can also increase your risk of cancer. And so you want to see your GI doctor and get reflux in check. But if you're having some voice issues related to it, we can always do some therapy and some education. Education is always very important, no matter what the problem is. But back to your specific issue, you can have reflux and have zero awareness that you're having it. Mm -hmm. And the way we found that out was through opera singers who couldn't hit their high C anymore, and so they sought out different specialists to try and figure out why. And through a process of elimination, they figured out 
they were having reflux, and when they got on the right medication, they were able to hit their high C again. So that's how we became aware that people can have massive reflux, zero awareness, and, and no frank symptoms that you would typically associate with reflux. Very interesting, very interesting. Just one of the many things that Susan can uh, uh, treat and handle and work with you on uh, through the uh, speech uh, pathology program at uh, Munster Memorial Hospital, all a part of the rehab unit there, which is an excellent unit. Susan, I wish we had more time, but uh, hopefully uh, Gayla will schedule you and we'll do this again down the road. That sounds like fun, Dee. Thank all you right. very Great much. Great to meet you and uh, continued success. There you go. She is uh, Susan Ward, speech pathologist at Munster Memorial Hospital. And that's going to wrap it up for our Thursday Community Service program here on KGAF.